In today's video, I want to cover an exciting new product from QNAP. It's the 2.5 gigabit switch that we've been waiting for. If you want to know more about why this is a game changer, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. I've been really excited about getting my hands on this 2.5 gigabit switch. I've had this thing on pre-order for a couple months now because I ordered the thing as soon as it, I found out it was coming out. Even though the prices of 10 gigabit switches are dropping, they're still a little expensive. And if you add to that the greater cost of 10 gigabit adapters and the fact that you have to do some rewiring in your house to get some CAT 6A or CAT 7 to benefit from 10 gigabit, and you end up with a substantial investment. Of course, the speed is awesome if you're willing to spend for that uh, initial investment. 2.5 gigabit has slowly been developing momentum as the new standard, with many motherboard and device manufacturers building in 2.5 gigabit interfaces right into their product. Add to that, the third-party adapters are becoming very common and extremely inexpensive. With 2.5 gigabit, you can effectively increase your network performance by 2.5 times using your current wiring. The only real problem was until now is we had no affordable switches to take advantage of these adapters. To address this, QNAP has just started shipping the new QSW1105-T. This is a 5 port 2.5 gigabit switch. The switch gives you 5 full ports of 2.5 gigabit connectivity as well as loop protection. It runs fanless so it's completely silent. Let's take a closer look at the hardware and then we can run a couple tests to see if it actually can deliver on the promise. Let's take a quick overview of the hardware. Um, the construction of this thing is actually really nice. It's all metal. There's no plastic on it whatsoever. Um, it is sort of deeper than probably most of the switches in the in the five port category. It's sort of an oddball size. The width is pretty standard for most of these small five to eight port switches. They do give you the option of either using the four rubber legs or you can wall mount. It does come with some wall mounting hardware. So that gives you some flexibility in how you mount it. The only real complaint, and this is not uh, unique to this one, is that on the front ports, with everything coming out of the front port, it's kind of difficult or awkward to put it on your desk because then you have all the cables coming out facing you, um, I would have probably preferred the cables come out of the back so that you can set it on your desk and you know have the cable management running out of the back. But that's a personal preference. If you're wall mounting this thing, you probably don't care. Um, it does come with a wall charger, of course. Um, this is really a low wattage charger. It's a max 12, up, uh, 12 watt output charger, 12 volts, one amp charger. So it's a... Uh, not this thing is not going to draw a lot of power if i had to guess i would say it's probably in this seven to eight nine range that it's probably actually using if you filled up all your ports as far as the hardware the physical hardware the only thing that's notable is there's a lot of ventilation on both sides there's no fans in this thing whatsoever so it does kind of make it nice to uh put on your desktop if you're going to do that that way you don't have to be listening to any kind of background noise um, I did mention, or hopefully I mentioned, that this is not a managed switch, so this is strictly a 2.5 gigabit standard switch, um, unmanaged. I'm going to be using this um, pluggable USB adapter, which I did a review on recently. I'll post a link to that. It performed really well when I tested it, so this will be a good test to uh, actually see if we can get maximum throughput out of this thing. So with that said, let's go ahead and give this thing a couple of test runs to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do, and we'll go from there. Okay, before we get started into the test, I just want to go over the, the quick hookup I did. Um, so I've got our cable running to the um, my test computer, which is basically a Core i7-7700 uh, running off of NVMe and running in that USB 2.5 gigabit adapter. Um, the yellow wire actually runs over to a 10 gig switch just to not so I don't introduce any bottlenecks going into the switch whatsoever. For the one gigabyte comparison um, 
what I'll be doing is actually bypassing and going straight to one gigabit port that's on the same switch so that we'll see the effective throughput of one of what one gig looks like so we can draw that comparison so let's go ahead and get started now that we've taken a look at the hardware let's run through a couple of tests to test this I'm going to use a USB network adapter that I recently did a review on and I'll certainly post the links to in the description um, we'll use this to evaluate the hardware to uh, test the performance, I'm going to transfer a large file across a couple of devices, as well as to run iPerf to measure the performance of the 2.5 gigabit um, switch against the 1 gigabit switch. So we can see the relative performance gain that we're going to get. Well, as you can see from the testing above, the performance of this switch is fantastic. It's carving through this file copy at a full 2.5 times faster without any problems, hesitations, fluctuations of any kind. Looking at the iPerf results, again we're seeing a huge gain in performance out of this low-cost switch. So based on the test results, this switch does perform as advertised and in my opinion really changes the landscape. We now finally have a 2.5 gigabit switch that works with your current cabling all for about $100 and allow you to use low-cost PCI and USB adapters to more than double the performance of your network. Using 2.5 gigabit now has become mainstream and pretty much a no-brainer when next time you do any kind of network upgrade. This switch is really well built and other than my small gripe about the wire routing, it's a fantastic switch, it's a fantastic value, and I really couldn't be any happier with it. Anyway, that's about it for this video, and if you found it useful, please throw it a like. Feel free to post comments or questions below, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click the notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.